So G Atherton yet oh, yeah, to win an event that the Atherton start. They've been riding on this hill for over 10 years. One of the very first practice tracks they had, and it would be massive for one of the Athertons to take that Red Bull Hardline title. And it's an aggressive start from G Atherton right out of the gate. He didn't get as wide as Bernard on that first left-hander, but you can see him pedaling out of that right-hander, trying to catch up the pace that he lost in the first straight. Flat tires and injury always seem to blight Atherton here. Going deep off the drop, which was smoother than previous riders. And a sign of how much speed he's carrying, I would say. The first split is coming up. Atherton desperate to win his own event. 1.7 into the green net. So, Atherton. Pulling out so much time at the top of the track, incredible. And again, going big over that step up. Robbie pedaled down to the cannon. He was carrying, so he knows he's going to push hard to win this. A broken wrist this year in Val de Sole definitely hindered him. Annoyed that he didn't get picked for the British team for the World Championships, the first time ever. He struck back with a second place at those finals in the breast, and he's good here in the open. Atherton showing us what he's made of. Look at this. Rob, he's pedaling out of every corner. We haven't seen that yet. Attacking everywhere. Either he knows he's lost a bit of time or he's pushing really hard. Two times a world champion, this man. And green again. Over three seconds now for Atherton then. Is this the day that he's waited for? His fifth attempt at taking a win here at Hardline. Over 100 World Cup starts, over 50 World Cup podiums to his name. <whistles> Clean over there. <laughs> Looking good. He's a bit like you, Greg. He's a man who knows how to rise for the big day. Oh, definitely. I mean, he's a threat on any track. And, you know, after coming back from injury and seeing him with a brace, he was pushing hard for that win there. He's three years old now. One of the most committed downhill races of all time. He's hit the ground harder than anyone I can think of, and he always gets back up. Takes the line to the rider's right. Oh, and a little dab there. And another, oh, and oh. a big mistake now. Both feet off. He's got to clip in before he goes off the He's going to have to recover and regroup now going into this last section for sure. You'd think he would have lost a little bit of time there than G. Atherton. Some big drops still to come. Holds it tight there. Still a bit hesitant, so, you know, it might have shaken him up a bit, not getting onto that uh, drop really smoothly. A little stall there as well, made sure he was nice and straight before that drop. No room for error on that part of the track. What's the next split going to tell us? Oh, and it's over five seconds. So despite getting in a bit of a muddle at the top of the road gap, Atherton's pace is phenomenal. Just this finish line straight to go now then. Is it going to be success for Atherton finally here at Red Bull Hardline? Just this big jump to go, he sends it. Atherton comes down to the line. It's going to be a home run. Atherton smashes Snowdonia. 3.06 the time. He takes the win for the first time by over five seconds. Atherton is your 2018 Red Bull Hardline winner. So Dan Atherton, the course designer, a man who knows every inch of this mountain, drops in. Well, let's hope he doesn't upset G by going faster. Some good rivalry between these siblings. And actually the most successful Atherton here so far, Dan, second back in 2014. Look at him floating through those turns there. Beautiful rider, Dan Atherton. Second in the Downhill World Cup a few years ago. Well, a little way back now. Back in 2004, the winner of a four cross. Different line. Holds it tight across there and gets away with it. Well, Atherton, clever ride in there. Didn't go down to the berm. We saw that line in qualifying, but he actually carried more speed out of the exit there. Changing Good. up the gears there. You can hear him crunching. Going to get a few pedals in as he comes down towards the Renegade step up. Step down, excuse me. The cannon. The cannon, excuse me. Here comes the renegade step up. And he's over six what seconds back. So Atherton has got some work to do. He's already seen his younger brother G go down. He was the first man out because he chose not to qualify. Dan will have ridden this course so many times with G. He knows exactly what it takes. And you've got to say, when you build a course this 
far beyond what most people's comfort zones are set at. You've got to be able to ride it yourself to prove that it works, haven't you? Yeah, he's a brave man, Dan. And, you know, he, let's not forget, broke his neck back in 2010, returned to racing back in 2011, switched from his focus from four cross and downhill to enduro, the Enduro World Series, where he's had a lot of success at that as well. And styling it out. So, under his own admission, he's going to have to make things stiffer next year, Ed. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely going to test himself. But he's a, he's a, you know, you speak to people, they say that Dan technically can even be better than uh, G. Certainly outstyling the uh, the brother there. But I think G was all business on this one. Almost tightened up a little bit too early there. As he slaloms between those pines. Definitely one of the most vocal patches of crowd as well. You'll always hear those guys screaming. It's steep again. Down through these rocks he comes. We've both walked out onto this boardwalk and it's a sturdy construction, but the drop is so big. Oh, over it safely. Oh, need and a that, parachute for that, really. That berm comes at you so quickly off the landing of such a huge step down. And losing more time. I but don't know. But it's to his brother, G. You can see just how big that landing is. Almost headbutting the handlebars off that drop. A little bit of whiplash. Plenty of encouragement. Lives within sight of this course. Busy building a new bike park, actually, just over the mountain. And Dan Athern is going to finish his Red Bull hardline run safely enough. A little bit off the pace. Atherton finishes nearly 12 seconds back on Brother G. Bernard Kerr, an incredible all-rounder. Slope style, dirt, free ride and downhill racing. He's got it all. Can he make it count on this course? Third last year. He is the last rider down. He can spoil Rory Cunningham's party. And definitely the biggest threat. The number one qualifier. Like we said, coming in off a fifth. And it's an aggressive start from him. He's been working on his fitness and you can see it. And he squashes that step up there directly over that. So that was fast from where I was sat. And what a season he's had, Bernard Kerr. His best ever World Cup season. 15th overall. Inside the top 10, 7th in Leergang. Into the trees he goes. Pumping through those first couple of turns into the trees. And onto the 12-foot rock drop. No problem. Big heavy landed. But that's the same for all these riders. He so. looks faster than Brayton was through there. A first indication of exactly how quick he's going is coming up. Again, though, almost squashing that. And he's up by 1.49. He it's knows the bike in. It's a massive run yeah. from Bernard Carrier. 1.49 seconds to burn now. Interesting to hear him say the technical parts of the course were his problem, not the jumps. <laughs> Straight lined off that big rock drop, though. So is Bernard Carrier on a winning run here? Well, that bike certainly looks like it is. Skipping through that rock section. Third, year, third lot here last year, Bernard Kerr. Oh, and he's fighting it on the way out there and he's extended. I don't believe it. 4.23 up now. This is a massive run from Bernard Kerr. Carrying that form over from a week ago, the World Championships. Rory Cunningham will be shifting in his seat in the finish area. Is he going to give up? Well, let's not forget, Bernard Kerr rode the wall over these jumps a little bit earlier. But look how comfortable he is in the air. Picks that bike up under him. No, just, no problems this time. Just like Brayton, he was high through those waterfall edge jumps. Plenty of pop. So Kerr should have this, barring any mistakes. But it's difficult. He's pushing out on these turns as well. Now, Brake was definitely quick through here, as was Cunningham. The crowd can hear it, they know he's on a good run here. Off this big step down. Styles it off there, so comfortable. This is almost an event made for this man. Brings a bit of skill from every discipline of bikes. 
Yeah, he was a man who couldn't pedal. He sorted that out. He got fit, and he's getting results. And this might be the biggest one to date. A win here at Hardline. He was deputy at the World Championships last week for G. Atherton. Can he come here now? He's carrying some speed down through that last tunnel. Tunnel of trees there, Ed. Here he comes in across the line. It's Bernard Kerr. Going to go fast as I think he is. Bernard Kerr, look at the time. 2.4 up. Bernard Kerr wins the 2016 Red Bull Hardline with an incredible run. What a run from him, the man from Surrey. He is, without question, one of the bravest riders out there. And in a course like Hardline, to stand out the way he does is truly phenomenal. It's his third time. He gets some pedals in there. Not scared. Mr. Gas to flat on course then. He the lean, green fighting machine that is Adam Brayton. Came fourth in 2015, third in 2016. Just the top two would be an improvement, but I get the feeling oh. today, Rob, he's only after one spot. And if he carries on riding like this, he's going to get it. Brighton. Well, people told me yesterday through this part, he was on another level. Bernard Kerr said it was like ice. Brighton seems to be finding grip there, even getting up over those rocks there. So this is phenomenal riding from Adam Brighton, but it's gone wrong. Loses a foot, gets back on. Wow. Didn't cost him time, I don't think. But look how quick he is. He's composed himself again. Has that given him pause for thought? Is he going to scale back? No. Absolutely no chance. <laughs> Look at him. Does a tear off in the air. <laughs> well, there isn't many places on this track where you can sort out your vision. Brayton and Tay making the most of the calm there for that split second in the air. Now, will he have seen Fayol go down here? He manages to oh. hold on to that. Uses that tiny little bit of berm to angle himself out into the waterfall's edge. This is Brayton at his best. He's risking everything. Sends it big over the waterfall's edge, the first jump there. Is he? He needs to just perhaps take his time now as he comes down towards the road gap. But so this is looking like a blistering run from Brighton so far. So strong, Adam Brighton. Spends his winters doing CrossFit. Some sort of strange training that makes you in a He-Man on a bike. Over the top of that rock, perfectly. Can he nail this exit? Took his time setting oh. up for it, and he hasn't. The wheel goes the wrong side. That's cost him a second, two, three seconds at least. Don't forget, he made the same mistake in the qualifiers further up the course, and he still took the win. He's that much faster. He's up. He's up by 0.6 of a second. So he is on another pace. And that split time is taken after that mistake. So yes. he has got a shot at the title here. Can he hold it on now? Just keep it going on the bomb. It's going to be his teammate if it's not Adam Brayton that takes the win here. We're looking at Hope 1-2 at the moment. Brayton there, last few turns. Oh, he goes, oh, he hits that tree so hard. Look at the bark where it's come off. He's body checked that tree. Poor tree. Adam looks OK, but that is it. You know what? Craig Evans is going to be your 2017 Red Bull Hardline winner. Who would have seen that coming? So, Brayton racing maybe for a spot in the top five. Oh. Got himself in the back seat so he could start cranking the moment he landed. Well, yeah, I don't believe it. That was a great run from Brayden. It went wrong right, really, at the last hurdle. But it's Craig Evans that takes the win. Chaos Seagrave about to drop yeah, in then. Man. Just down the road, lives about an hour away, 20 years old. Third time at Red Bull Hardline for this talented young man. He's riding with no gloves, even in the wet, which is, uh, you know, that's, that's his sort of, that's his trademark. That high line. Whoa. Oh. And that got a bit messy there, I'd say. Yeah, but that's what Chaos needs, I think, for those race runs. He needs to be on the edge a bit more. He's such a talented rider, you know, he's so, he's such a good bike rider, but the race runs just seem to get away from him. So, if you're looking to do something here at Rebel Hardline, really kind of, he wants to get on that podium and, you know, he deserves to, if you ask me. Well, he's absolutely capable of it. That is for sure, like you say, mad skills. Just one and a half back then. That first flip. Oh, no way. It's almost a normia. He spoke too soon. Oh, and he's down. Just like that at the top. He's not going to summon out him before he slides down that. Well, he's got down there one way or another. Well, he flipped it. Someone get that man a rope. At least he didn't go down the waterfall. <laughs> no, that would have been a lot worse, but that is how slippery it is up there. No gloves, no love in this weather. <laughs> I think he said that went well. 
<laughs> did he? Yeah. That went well. Race. He's not at the bottom yet. Yeah, exactly. Here He's still got us. Really hard. Hucks it. Oh, oh, makes it round the turn. And it's so distracting once you have a crash in that race run, you know, you, you've got to really clear your oh. mind. And, oh. oh, and look how slick it is, yeah. right? That, those feelings like that when you're on a bike and two wheels are start drifting under you. And there's very little you can do about there's it. Very little you can do. And it would probably help if we had more rain up there, you know, it would probably make it a bit grippier. This track, you started this track here, what, 15 years ago? It's probably, wow. It's been heavily modified since then. Yeah, the old yeah. natural version, though, but how slippery is that rock? I mean, when it's wet. As bad as it looks, I imagine. Big one foot, a massive, oh, huge over there. Both feet blown off the pedals on landing. Oh, He's going to be feeling yeah. that. OK, I'll probably just look at how a bit of fun here. Such a hip, and he flipped it. What? Oh my god! That is crazy hard. Crazy tech to do that. What a madman! And he's still on his feet, thankfully. Yeah, he pretty much rode it out. What a madman! That was cool. He's going to get some speed up in a second. I'm glad we're not missing this. I will say that. That was. Yeah. I mean, that is a tech jump. We've yeah. Been straight it's, there, it's, isn't it? Yeah, it's really technical. You know, the riders are carving off the net. You really pull it across. And we've seen in previous years, some of the riders landed in that tree behind Chaos there. Yeah. So that just shows you how much of a hip that it is. That tree has had a lot of love over the years, <laughs> yeah. didn't it? I think it was Gaetan Vizé last yeah. year who was absolutely in sync before bear, it. Yeah. Yeah. That was Koala sick. Koala <laughs> yeah. OK, Chaos, don't do anything else. <laughs>